Hello and welcome to Let's Play Factorio with me, Qualification. Uh, this game is a game about managing production lines, really, and it's uh, got a lot in common with, I would say, most in common with Anno 2070, as well as, to some extent, Dwarf Fortress, uh, and just a very small bit in the beginning, I guess, is similar to Minecraft. Uh, we're going to jump into a... Uh, the campaign in this game is really good. It, very, it introduces you to the, all the concepts you need to know about in the game very well. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go with a uh, new game. And we're not going to have peaceful mode on. Um, I think all this is probably good. Um, the only thing is... Uh, actually, that's fine. I'm not really sure what terrain segmentation actually is. I don't know if that means the different biomes. There are a few different ones. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's much difference between them besides the amount of trees that are present, though. The resources are scattered randomly, as far as I can tell. Uh, whatever, let's just generate a world. So, Factorio is an interesting game. Um, uh, Alright, so in the free play mode, your end goal is to get rocket defenses in order to protect landing ships to colonize this new planet that we have arrived on, which is full of hostile native life. Um, we need to research advanced technologies in order to unlock the rocket defense. So specifically, I'll just go to the tech screen here, actually, there's tips on. Uh, what we are trying to do ultimately is get this, and this is an extraordinarily high amount of research, especially since so all of the, the first three science packs in this tier you can manufacture using basic resources in the game. The purple science packs, the alien science packs, that requires um, alien uh, orbs, which you can only get by destroying alien bases. So uh, that is extremely high amount of resources. And I guess then you can build a rocket defense, although it's look there, you can see it's extremely high on resource quantity. So uh, we don't have to worry about technologies yet. What we're going to do first is kind of survey the area here. And we're looking for coal. I can see there's a large deposit down there, smaller one here. We start the game out with a burner mining drill, a stone furnace, and a few iron plates. Um, I think what we're going to do off the bat here is use the burner mining drill and I'm gonna be moving this thing around a little bit uh, alright we gotta make a an iron axe so we can actually do some work here we'll use half of our iron plates for that and we're gonna grab some coal here just a couple pieces and we'll throw that in the coal burner here and we're just gonna stand in front of this and collect coal for a few seconds um, so if you're not familiar with this game basically what you're doing is you are creating tools, creating uh, finished goods from raw resources that you extract from the environment. The most basic extraction tool in the game, and one that you'll abandon very soon after starting, ideally, is the burner mining drill, which you can see here. Uh, what this is doing, once you place it onto any uh, resource it can collect from, which will be copper, iron, or coal, uh, actually stone as well, um, then it will start producing at a fairly slow rate uh, resources, which if I move aside here for a second, you can just barely see right there, I've highlighted it, there's coal on the ground. Um, and I'm just standing in front of this picking it up right now because we don't have any resources. Let's see how much coal we have now. Uh, whoops, just rotated that accidentally. Um, we have 12 coal, that should be enough for us to move on to some other stuff. Uh, what we want to do right now in the very beginning is just gather up enough basic resources to build more burner mining drills. Um, and I might actually use some of this other iron here just to do that, and then we can accumulate a small amount of resources. You can see the rate at which it's uh, actually making these things is very slow. Uh, and we can go ahead and throw down a furnace here, and we'll put the ore in there, give it a little bit of coal. And now uh, this is going to smelt into iron plates, which we use to create most of the things we need in this game, including the uh, burner mining drill. So uh, yeah, right now I'm just trying to be able to create another one of these things. Uh, next we're going to need some stone, so just uh, throw that in there, throw this in there, and then I'm going to take this out, 
and we're going to go mine a little bit of stone. Um, and give it again some resources and just stand in front of it again. Actually, we have these, so. Um, and the threat in this game is that there are hostile alien natives on the planet. And uh, we, we have not located any yet, but they will attack us. And the parameter for them attacking you is uh, how much pollution you're generating. So if I look at the map, uh, right now you can't even see it. Like, we're not generating any significant amount of pollution from this one burner mining drill operating. Uh, but as we continue to expand our uh, resource collection and production facilities, um, which we need in order to advance our research towards rocket defense, uh, the pollution will rise, and once pollution reaches an alien base, then the aliens will come and attack the nearest settlement in order to quell whatever the pollution was caused by. So we have enough stuff now that if we go back here and collect the iron plates, we should be able to create another uh, burner mining drill, which will allow me to um, ideally kind of start automating a little bit of the stuff here. Uh, so. Right now, I've kind of been running around to do a lot of this stuff, um, but that is not ideal, obviously. What we want to be doing is have this running on its own, and uh, the theme throughout the game is that as you progress, there's higher and higher levels of automation going on, basically. So we are right now waiting on iron plates to get done, then I'm going to build another uh, track similar to the one I have down here, and that is going to eject coal. Uh, for a while outside of this burner drill and uh, so what we're doing our immediate goal the very near future what we're trying to do is build a power plant so that we can stop burning coal in order to finish uh, production on stuff in order to run these mines and that sort of thing. We're still going to need coal for various things, including we're going to need coal to power ourselves in order to power the steam engines that we're going to build. Uh, but we will not have to manually insert coal into everything in order to make it work as we currently do. So I'm just going to leave this running with a little bit of coal and we're going to focus on iron production for a little bit here. What I'd like to do is, uh, if we have enough resources, not yet, unfortunately, just put in a little bit more iron there. Uh, what I'd like to do uh, right now is basically grab a an inserter. What an inserter will do is take from one location and put in another location, and that's useful in all kinds of situations. Uh, but right now we're just trying to get enough iron to create a burner inserter which will then automate, to some extent anyways, the production of iron bars for us. All right, so this thing will now, uh, well, there's too much iron in here right now, but in a moment here, once this is burned off, the uh, amount of iron, I think you need two in there for it to actually, uh, and there's technically three in here right now, so there we go, yeah, it's at two. Um, it'll move. You can see it there. It picked up that iron, it puts it in there, and then this burns and that creates iron plates. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and create an iron chest. And let's go ahead and grab this coal here. This is still not automated at all. So just right now I'm manually moving these resources around. In the future we'll have this set up on uh, conveyor belts and inserters that aren't running on coal but instead electricity, which will. Uh, then make it possible for us to kind of ignore this basic collection stuff. So then we take the finished product out of the, um, the stone furnace here, and you can I can alt to enable what's being produced and stored. You can see it's producing iron plate, and it's going to put the iron plate in this chest. So now all we have to do in the you know, right now is monitor its fuel consumption, basically. And we could mo uh, automate that right now, but I'm not interested in it until we get the actual power going. So in order to make power, we're going to need copper, because we need to make electronic circuits, and that's a component necessary for that. So we need to get another uh, burner mining drill, basically. It just means more iron. All right. And there was a copper deposit over here. I don't know if we have enough pollution yet. Okay, yeah. So you can see this kind of very faint red 
outline, this area is now being polluted, not very much, uh, by us. And so if there were hostile aliens in the area, they would come and attack us uh, after a little while. Um, okay, let's grab up some more iron. We're going to need a little bit of coal to actually power the burner drill. Split that, split it again. Create this on the move. Um, and... Go ahead and put that there. Um, see, do we have enough iron to do that? Yeah, we got one conveyor belt we can do. And I guess what we could do is that, just kind of, you know, copper is probably the least important resource uh, that you need to extract. Well, actually stone is, but copper is, uh, you don't use very much copper relative to how much deposits of copper are available in the world. By far the resource you use the most of is iron, uh, as you might expect, iron and steel, which you make through the processing of iron. Uh, okay, so need some fuel all right we're waiting on that we're gonna need another furnace in order to turn uh, copper into copper bars I'm actually gonna take this and let's see where's a stone pile up here go and get this thing working grab a few transport belts doesn't take very much stone. I think it's like five stone per furnace, and you don't usually need that many furnaces except for the very beginning of the game uh, because you have to set up all these uh, smelting facilities for the first time. All right, so we're going to do another one of those uh, automated, well, semi-automated anyways, uh, setups down here. Use a burner insider inserter to transfer the copper into the furnace where it will then be turned into bars. Uh, I don't know if we will use a wooden box since we mined some trees on our way here and we'll put another inserter down to extract the finished goods. And we'll just power this thing with wood because we're not going to need very much of it. <clears throat> so in order to finish a, we need an offshore pump, a steam engine, and a couple of boilers. Uh, the offshore pump is the one that requires electronic circuits, and that is going to take three bars and five uh, iron, which we probably already have accumulated realistically. Actually, apparently production stopped there because we ran out of coal in the furnace. Just put four in there. <clears throat> Alright, so we can build our offshore pump. And this is a fine location for power generation. I can see actually uh, these little areas here are oil deposits and that is an enormous quantity of crude oil um, sitting right in our starting area. It's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, so you want to put your power plants, uh, and near the beginning of the game at least, you want to put them near uh, deposits of coal because what you're going to do uh, in most circumstances is set up a feed from a coal mine to a power plant directly uh, into the boilers that is because steam power what you're doing is you're heating up uh, water it evaporates into steam uh, the steam then propels a turbine which will generate energy the electricity um, and we'll use let's see this looks like a fine space we're going to need more iron for actually doing anything more with that, though. So the beginning part of this game is fairly tedious. Uh, really all you're doing is running around managing the production of really limited quantities of basic resources. And you have to do it all manually. Uh, so right now we already have 13 copper bars, which is more than we'll need for any of this stuff. Just waiting on iron production, really. Might be worth it to build another burner. I think I'll go collect the stone from up here. And then we'll demolish this, uh, this burner miner drill. And we will create... Actually, I didn't need to make that. Whatever, we have two of them now. Let's put a 
couple of those down, split, and give you the one left over. Just have it feed directly into that. And that's actually just going to be bottlenecked because we're not producing. Uh, it does not smelt fast enough for it to matter in any case. Uh, we would have to set up another stone furnace if we wanted to actually make it go faster. So we can build a steam engine now. Let's go ahead and do that. We're not going to be able to actually use it yet because we're going to need boilers. <clears throat> Keep collecting these basic resources. And I might just demolish this up here now. I'm not going to need any more copper. Alright. Okay, um, and we're out of fuel on most of this stuff down here, of course. Just fix up a couple of coal in there. Alright. Alright, we have enough for one boiler, which is enough to power a steam engine. So let's go ahead and start on our production of electric energy. I might actually put it over in this section instead. I don't really want to... So the thing I'm thinking about here is that putting it on the right side might be better because we're probably going to extract from the left side and send it up into the area with the iron. But whatever, this will just will make room for it over here. Uh, put that there. And this will just be really simple right now. Probably uh, change this in the future, but... There's that, and we want to create a couple of electric poles. There we go. So now um, we can generate power. We're not generating power because there's nothing to power yet. If we build an electric mining drill, we're going to need more iron for that. Then we will start creating energy. Uh, did you give us enough there? Yes, OK. So electric mining drills are the mainstay of your actual resource collection in this game. They are how you will be acquiring all of the stuff that you're going to need. So we can just put this... Hmm. I guess for now we'll go with this setup and let's go ahead and start feeding that in this direction. Just throw in the boilers here. So now we have that operating, although it is not automated power yet, because what we want to do is take coal from this production line conveyor belt down here and have it fed into that boiler there so that the boiler will always be hot enough for the steam engine to produce electricity. And actually, that's one too far. And it won't even bother collecting coal until it gets low enough, so... This will probably not be consuming power most of the time. And uh, in the future, we are going to have to adjust this because of the scaling up that we're going to be doing. Uh, but now we need to start uh, creating some electrical lines towards this part of the map so we can start mining out iron. Although, actually, we're going to need to get a little bit more iron from the current setup due to the... And what I'm going to do here is just fuel this with wood. <clears throat> uh, one thing to note is that they will not; these drills do not consume electricity unless, or they don't consume power or the resources that power them in the case that they're burners, unless there's actually work to be done. So the burner mining drills, this coal one here, you would think that it's it's been running the longest and I haven't fed it, so it should have run out, but actually it um, hasn't been working uh, because this has been filled up, and you'll see it happen here in a moment once it gets this last piece. Um, yeah, see, so you can see it stopped working. So now it's not going to consume power. It's not going to burn that coal uh, because it's already maxed out its production. So you don't have to worry about that, uh, which is nice. Let's take this out. It's not helping. Um, do we have enough yet? No, we need more... We need 23. We're like halfway there. 
Yeah, so sorry this is not very interesting from the very beginning of the game. Um, it does look like we have a pretty good volume of resources here. I am a little bit concerned about the fact that the coal, there's a lot of it, but it's really quite far away from our actual iron production facility. It might create the iron bars somewhere in this region. Actually, since copper's over here, it might be more like there. Uh, we'll see. So we got 23, start on that electric drill, and what we're going to use this drill to do is uh, automate iron production. Alright, so we're going to need to start that power line up to the... actual resource field and I'm doing this kind of inefficiently if you want to make it the longest possible distance just click and drag from the last pole <clears throat> so let's do this and let's do that for now we can replace these with electrical inserters ah, we don't actually have enough iron maybe if we grab those no We're lacking oh that actually requires copper too we have copper though Okay, let's just throw down some coal then. And I'll manually feed this for now, it's fine. Just collect directly out of here too. Okay, there's one inserter. So we can start doing that. I wanna power that as well. Um, and, oh, and one thing that has confused a lot of people about this game is the uh, placement, basically, of uh, buildings, especially power plants, uh, it will tell you that it's, like, you would think it's acceptable based on the circumstances, and you click, well, that was a bad example, but you click, and it won't let you. That's just because your character is not close enough to place it. So if it's white like that, that's what that means. If you can't actually physically place it, the object will turn red, like this uh, power point, or power line is doing. Okay... Iron plates. All right, now we can officially have automated iron plate production. Kind of. Still not quite there. What we're missing is a coal line fed into this. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is automate the production of coal up here. We're going to need more copper for that, actually. So we are going to have to go and rebuild the burners just for a little bit. I'm gonna have to clear these trees out of the way. All right, and I will just throw down a track. Okay, of course there's not enough, and I got and I ran out of coal, so let's go collect the coal from down here. Actually, just gonna reinstate the coal burner. Give it one piece, <clears throat> uh, just because we're gonna need a few more of that basic resources for just a little while longer. And we'll go ahead and give that there. All right. <clears throat> and create a couple of transporter belts and what we'll do is have an inserter take that into a furnace go ahead and grab some more electrical poles as well we're not actually gonna have enough to bring it so I have to manually deal with the furnace which actually of course we don't have enough stone to do that so I will head down and manually create some uh, basically what I'm going to do is just temporarily change this into an copper processing alright, just throw the copper in there and I guess what we can do while that is loading up is uh, physically mine out uh, we'll just throw this last burner on it actually a little bit of stone so that we'll have enough to create some more furnaces. And we 
actually have. Just so happen to have one piece of coal we can use to automate a grabber like that. Do we have enough yet? Okay, whoops, I just built a boiler, but I canceled it in time, so I can just build this furnace down here. And we'll throw the copper in there. And I forgot we're out of fuel again. Uh, so the beginning of the game here is just, yeah, it's just not all that exciting. Oh, we can build another electrical mining drill. And what we'll use this mining drill to do is automate this coal line, I think. Actually, copper is probably more important because we're going to need copper for the production of mining drills. And for that matter, uh, power lines. down there we go and it needs power now so let's go ahead and connect it to the grid there we go so this will produce copper automatically which means we can now uh, feed copper off of the production line into burn that because uh, one thing about inserters also that uh, people new to the game may not be familiar with is that uh, they will grab one to the right or left of the actual little bar there so you can see they're grabbing from this end of this line here um, is not entirely intuitive you'd think they'd only grab from directly in front of it but no they can grab there um so that's important you can always end your production lines a little bit short otherwise what will what'll end up happening is that so oh good we should have enough copper in here now Let's stop that and put back the inserter to create iron again and this isn't really ideal we're going to rework this do we have enough yet for it? No, we need more iron. I'll just go ahead and throw some more coal on here. Once we get an electric drill mining coal, then we will be able to start automating the actual furnaces themselves, which is what will be necessary for the end of this kind of manual feeding tedium. I have to go and monitor all this stuff. So let's check our pollution. It's still pretty insignificant. Uh, there's no sign of any alien bases in the, in the region, the nearby area. Uh, you should start out that way. Your game should begin that way uh, because the map generates a starting area which has all the necessary basic resources uh, to create some you know very basic uh, automation. And there shouldn't be uh, alien bases within that region. All right, so let's go ahead and take that out. Move this, this. And we're going to go ahead and do it like this. And we'll eventually put another uh, coal mining thing here. And it's going to feed into a track that will head to the furnaces, which we are going to move this stuff as soon as I have enough transporter track. And we need to also bring power over here. Oops. Alright. Uh, also, something else that new people might need to know about this game. Um, if you place a track the wrong way, so if I wanted this track to go up instead of down, you don't have to build a new track on top of it. You can just click R on it and flip it. Now we're just waiting on transporter belts. So I gotta start thinking about the actual layout I wanna do for furnaces. Hmm. Go up here and collect the copper that's been stockpiled in here. Ah, that's a 
a lot of copper. I'll just feed it a little bit more coal, and that should keep it running long enough that we won't have to worry about that for a long time. Not until we start automating the production of copper bars anyways. Um, okay, still waiting on iron. And what we could do here is uh, facilitate the uh, better use of our resources. You can see it's moving very slowly. We have all this iron production that is just uh, dramatically outpacing our ability to smelt the iron. What we're going to do also is move that so we can make better use of this track. Alright, so we have nine. Still not really that much. Uh, I don't want to do it, but we might have to grab more stone. Let's see how much is in here. Only five. That's well enough for one furnace if I want to build that. Which I will just keep that running for a little while longer. Grab a bit more stone out of it. Grab up this coal. And let's build a furnace. Whoops. And what we'll do is collect from right here and output to. Hmm, I'm trying to think of a way. Well, you can't really put it in that box. Whatever, that's fine for now. It doesn't really matter that much. Just fill this back up. Um, and I need to grab one of these. Electrical inserter. Grab it right off the line. And power it. Alright, so now we're going to have double iron plate production. should allow us to automate this uh, furnacing thing a lot faster. Okay. And uh, we can check on our power consumption. I don't think we're really going to be that close to... Yeah, what you can see here is that uh, one of these steam engines can output at maximum, if it's got 100% temperature all the time, 510 kilowatts. Uh, and our current consumption is fluctuating right about three to four hundred kilowatts, um, depending on, I assume, the uh, how many mines are currently active. So basically, whenever this production chain has to pull ore off of it and this thing goes back into action, or up there, same thing happening. Uh, and we probably aren't heating up the water. Well, it is at a hundred degrees, it's just only... It's not really using that much of its power. Which is fine, because it's only consuming enough resources to maintain its level of performance. We aren't actually losing like efficiency for that. I mean, we are in like a theoretical sense, but not a physical one. Uh, Alright, so we can build a couple more electric mining drills, but we don't really want to do that. Which we'll do anyways, though, because we're going to amp up our coal and iron production. Grab stone. Alright. Enough stone there for four furnaces, which should be enough furnaces really to keep us occupied at our current level of possible uh, consumption and production. Uh, okay. Put that there. Put that there. And it'll be... Alright, so... Basically, uh, in if you look in the right side of the screen, you'll see the electric mining drill over here where my mouse is. Uh, you can see how much expected resources it has. That's based on how many of these tiles that the mine has access to, and how many it has access to is dependent on that green area around it. Uh, so these have a lot more resources available than this one. Uh, although this, this actual deposit here is not that rich of a deposit, uh, oftentimes what you'll find is one that has access to full, uh, like a full area of resources around it, is going to be in like the 30,000s region. Uh, this is kind of a poor area. I assume it's because our starting area. And this has ceased production, so let's go and grab the copper. 
We'll feed it these three pieces of coal we have. And we have our necessary furnaces set up. What I'm going to do is start laying out our furnace production area. So put one there, one there, one there, and one there. And what we're going to want to do We don't have long-handed inserters yet, uh, which would make this a lot easier. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is run two lines. We'll have iron running on the bottom, and we'll have coal running on the top. And what it'll do is grab the iron and then the coal, and it'll produce bars inside of there. And for now, we cannot yet automate the... Well, potentially we could, but under this design, which is rather efficient and the one we're going to be using, we cannot automate the storage of iron plate. We can only automate the production of it. Uh, if we had long-handed inserters, we could. Take that down. We'll build a couple. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these. <clears throat> okay, so do like that, and that, and that, and that, and the same thing up there. All right, so the coal area is good to go. And now, basically, what we need to do is just remove all of the stuff that's in the way. But I'm going to wait for a second until it produces a little bit more iron for me. So I'll have enough to make some track. Alright, let's go ahead and dismantle these. Alright. And let's go ahead and put the iron on a path to the production area. Go ahead and power this stuff up. And voila, we now have, oh, I seem to have placed this backwards. Um, we now have automated production of, you know, in relatively infinite automated production of iron plate. Uh, this can continue working forever, so long as we have the power necessary to provide it and the resources necessary to feed into it. Uh, this will go on without our um, interference at all. Uh, and that's good. Uh, in the future, what I'm going to do is, once we have enough research to actually do it, that is, we're going to swap into making this uh, produce the iron plates and then the iron plates will go on to a different assembly line that will be used in other projects. So now that we have power, we have automated production of basic resources, um, at least for iron plate. Copper again is not nearly as important as iron, so I'm content to just manually feed this for now and collect it when I need it. Go ahead and swap that out, it should be enough to burn it for a long time. Um, our next goal is going to be getting research on the road. And to do research, you need a lab, which will eat science packs, and you need, uh, well, at the very beginning, all you can do is produce them by hand, but you will want to set up production facilities, which automate the uh, actual production of science packs. So we want to make 10 of these. And while these are crafting, let's just go and explore a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and save the game. Uh, if you die, you will, uh, you will, um, oh, whoops, there's no spaces allowed. You will have to revert to a previous save. Oh, right, this is probably what it is. So that will be an acceptable title. And uh, there are auto saves. Okay, we have aliens right there. Oh my god, that is a humongous nest of aliens. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
bases. So we are definitely going to want to set up walls in this side of the area and gun turrets. Uh, but we can't do that yet. Whew. All right, that is actually right next to our spawn. That is a lot more aliens or alien bases concentrated in one area than I've had to deal with in the past. Uh, going and destroying those bases is quite difficult. Um, if you don't have any sort of explosives, then it's realistically it's just not feasible to do. So for most of the early game, what you're going to be doing is concentrating on defense. And so what we want to defend principally is our production areas. And uh, to do that, what we're going to need to do is create walls. Walls require stone brick. And stone brick is simply smelted stone. And uh, the only stone production we have at the moment is this single burner mining unit, which I'll keep stockpiling stone in. And how much can that store? That'll be plenty of stone. Uh, and hmm, I'm going to check our pollution levels. So what will happen is if this red area here spreads to this, then we are going to alert that alien base and periodically they will come to raid nearby structures and destroy them. And what we'll have to do is go out and kill those raiding parties. And since that is a massive collection of alien bases, those are going to be pretty large raiding parties. Um, all right, we have a lot of iron plates now. We finally have a respectable quantity. Let's go ahead and create an, a lab so we can spend these science packs. And the very first technology we're going to research is automation. What automation will do is, oh, we can just look at the description. It'll give us the assembly mach assembling machine one, which will, uh, basically what you can do in an assembling machine is use resources or finished goods and create other finished goods so uh, we could instead of having to create the science packs by hand for instance we could build an assembling machine that will create science packs but the thing is if we look at this you can only use on assembling machine ones at least you can only craft items that require up to two ingredients so uh, there are a lot more complex items in the game like uh, the electric mining drill it's not really that complex, but it requires three different ingredients. It requires iron plate, iron gear wheel, and electronic circuits. However, uh, iron gear wheels and electronic circuits are themselves, they are going to require um, another production facility because those, you have to make those. You can't just give it iron and it will make it for you. No, you have to create these first. So we'd have to create an assembling machine for iron gear wheels which just requires iron, that's pretty simple. But we also have to create one for electronic circuits. Electronic circuits require iron and copper cable, and a copper cable is simply just copper plates. <clears throat> so it's pretty complex. Setting up uh, science automation is one of the more complex things in the game. It's also one of the most uh, important, it's one of your most obvious signs of progress is when you've automated your current tech trees level of science. So let's go ahead and place down this lab. And we'll just feed it all 10. This is going to go kind of slowly because it has to burn through each one of these um, in order to finish the research of automation. All right, and what we want to do really, once we finish the research of automation, what I think we're going to do is set up a production line using iron plate uh, because it unlocks the assembling machine. It also unlocks the long-handed inserters. So what we can do is put a long-handed inserter here place, uh, extract the iron plate from here, place it on this conveyor belt, and then this conveyor belt, suddenly it has the capacity to produce, uh, or allow assembling machines to produce whatever requires metal, such as iron gear wheels, uh, which are necessary for science. So. And we've got a bunch of copper plate now. Plenty of raw materials at this point. Okay, so right now we're just waiting on the finished automation. 
think what I will do actually is just go ahead and create a chest. We'll put this over here because I'm not going to be building near the crude oil for a long time. Uh, and we'll store all this old stuff in there, the burner materials. We're not going to be using that like ever again. Let's check our electricity consumption. So we are kind of near the top. Uh, you could see there for a moment we were running at about 450, I think, kilowatts, which uh, you can see there we're spiking again, uh, which is we can only produce 510 off of one of these steam engines. Uh, and we are going to just throw down another steam engine, actually, preemptively, because as soon as we finish automation, we're going to start actually building, assembling machines, which will consume a fair deal of power. And also, while we're here, we might as well, while we're waiting. Okay, so we finished automation research. Uh, next, we want to pick an, a good tech for... Uh, early automation. I would say I'm tempted to go for turrets simply because we need defense from the uh, yeah, I think we are going to go for turrets. We need defense from those uh, aliens that are just really close to us down there. <clears throat> so we're going to go and prioritize that. And we're going to create one, two, three, four long-handed inserters, which will pull iron plates onto this assembly line. And we're going to create some assembly machines. All right. Oops. I think we actually need to put one more down here. Actually, let's just experiment with that, see if it places it onto the track. No. Okay. So I'll put another one of these here, and here, and here. Okay, so now we have massive uh, iron plate production on this conveyor belt, which we can then use for... I'm going to start off immediately by going for iron gear wheels, and we will continue this in a line, and we'll go ahead and pull directly off of it. And I think what we will do is create the uh, cog production chain right here. All right, let's just power this up. And of course it's gonna place it in the area that is not conducive to the entire production chain working. So now we have uh, cogs being made. Cogs are one half of what we need to create red science packs automatically. The other half is uh, actually just copper plate. Straight up copper plate is all we need, really? Okay, well that's pretty simple then. Uh, we could just feed this. Uh, it's not really planning well in the long term though because of the nature of this production line being manual, at least in part. But we'll just do it anyways. Create some transport belts. So what we're going to do now is start pulling copper bars onto this assembly line. And we're going to feed those bars into the uh, another production chain, which we're going to set up probably... I'm thinking we want to put that up a little bit. Let's clear out these trees. And this is a, you know, you could, what you could be doing at this point in the game uh, is just sort of temporarily automating it by setting up, you know, direct depositing the resources you need into boxes that will then feed into the production of, now we're going to need to move this one over actually, um, the production of science packs. Which isn't a, a terrible strategy, but I personally would like to have... We're also going to need to move this one over, actually. Uh, I personally like to have a more permanent uh, mechanism for it. Alright. That's still too much, yeah. I 
forgot how big these things were. All right, this should be enough. All right, yeah, now we have enough space for it. Okay. Uh, we'll create a power line there, and we'll hook it up here. What we're going to do is create red science packs. And to do that, we need a couple of inserters. Uh, you really burn through inserters, and honestly, I stop using inserters once I unlock the fast inserters, almost entirely. Um, you burn through inserters, and you burn through conveyor belts a lot in this game. So it's uh, not only... Uh, the next, the green science packs, one of the features they need in order to be created in an assembly machine is that they require uh, conveyor belts as well as inserters. So what the game is telling you is if you want to automate production of green science packs, you have to first automate production of conveyor belts and inserters, which is a good idea because of how much you use those resources. Um, so that's kind of a, I guess, an introductory thing for new players. Like, that's a, a good way to ensure that you're getting the base amount of resources that you should have for later on. And are we... Eh, I guess we can just straight up uh, automate the production of actual science as well, research. So let's go take this lab that we built earlier and we'll put this on one side here and uh, should build another one of these labs actually. What we're going to do is just pull science off the production line there and put it in the lab and then the lab will indefinitely, so long as these production chains continue to run create science for us. So it'll always research red science for us. And you can see electricity is fluctuating, which means that we are in need of extra production capacity. And we are only producing, we're not producing very much energy right now. I do not know exactly why. If I had to guess, it's because this is not very efficient. Yes, the temperature on this water is not being heated very well. So let's actually tear that down, build a boiler here. Realistically, we should just build two boilers to begin with. And move the power pole. So, yeah, this is that thing that would happen that I mentioned earlier where we had to redesign the power situation a little bit. And we'll just throw down one more inserter to give coal to that area. And that'll heat up the water enough to actually... Is this not powered? What? What's going on? I guess this isn't, it doesn't have any coal in it yet. So we'll just manually insert that to get it started. There we go. So now that'll work forever um, until we run low on power again. And let's just check our pollution levels. All right, we're still good. All right. Um, so you can see it's automatically researching for us now. Let's go ahead and throw down another lab, grab another inserter to throw down the science inside of it. Power that all up. And how are we doing on electrical demand satisfaction now? So yeah, we can produce about a thousand kilowatts now, uh, which is good. Get this science packs to the actual facilities. Move this one down because that'll allow it to grab science packs later on in the cycle. All right, so we have turrets research, and we're gonna want to build turrets uh, very quickly because that's, uh, and we're also gonna build walls. Um, but logistics is probably the next most important upgrade that you can get. What logistics will do, it will give it access to underground belts and splitters, which are useful for various pitfalls that happen in your management of your resource flows, and also fast inserters, which is just a direct upgrade over regular inserters. They require more power, 
but they also uh, move items just drastically more quickly, um, which is really good. So I don't know if this is actually going to be producing science fast enough. We might have to set up another one of these, um, which is fine because we are way out producing the amount of uh, copper and cogs that we would reasonably need. Uh, but instead, what I'm going to do is... There, we have another one of these already. Use our excess cogs... Actually, I'll put this down here. Uh, to create some... I don't want to grab two of these. A box. Conveyor belt automation. And that is going to be used for our... Need one more of these, which we need iron gear wheel for. Okay, and we need copper bars. So. There. Just looking here to check our resources. Yeah, we need more iron, basically. And you can see that we're uh, with four of these furnaces operating. Really, only the first two are producing iron onto this belt because the demand for iron is pretty low here. All we're doing is producing cogs and then it just stockpiles here and so the two on the right uh, they're just stockpiling iron in their actual furnaces so we can pull that out for our personal use right now. And we're going to turn this into conveyor belt production. And for that we are going to need iron so now we're actually going to move the chain a little bit and we don't have underground belts yet so once we get logistics we can use underground belts and then that will transfer we'll throw one here and one here and we can put that into uh, this machine here oh no that's the wrong direction we want to flip it there we go and we're going to want to grab another one of these Actually, theoretically, what we could do this might actually just be better in the long run as well. Build a long-handed inserter. Swap that back. Whoops. No, I didn't mean to face it that way. Build a long-handed inserter, throw it here, Oops. and it'll pull iron off of that area instead. There we go. And now we are going to see the production of these get on their way and these go really quick just bam 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 so that is a great way to stock up on transport belts which you need lots of and we should probably increase our copper production make this more efficient I don't know it might be worth it to automate it I can't see any coal resources in the area though which would mean we'd have to pull coal all the way over there to here unless there's a closer copper resource no I don't see it on the map so that's unfortunate. Uh, let's put some more coal in here. Uh, we now have lots of that. What I'm going to start doing is uh, we'll grab out 32 of that. Well, we'll grab out 64 of it. And what we're going to start doing is actually uh, creating throw raw wood in here for now. Um, okay, we got logistics, good. Now we can get... I'm trying to think of... Uh, steel processing is important. I think we go for steel processing. Uh, so I'll do that and move it here and here, okay. And we will replace that. Swap that over. All right, so now we're creating stone bricks out of here. And really, we want to put those stone bricks into another box. So let's just do that. Probably doesn't need to be an iron chest. I doubt we're going to need that much. Or we're going to neglect it for that long. But now you can see, if we go to combat section here, we can create walls and then we can start placing walls uh, over on the left side of our base where that gigantic swarm of aliens is. Because, eh, yeah, we're still not ramping up our pollution yet. It's still not a real big factor for us. 
what is going on down here? Why is this not powered? Did we run out of coal again? Ah, yes, I see. I had the uh, I had the inserter backwards. I had it putting coal back onto the uh, production line rather than the other way around, so it was not heating water. After it burned through that initial amount of coal, actually it didn't even burn through all of it, it just uh, stacked it on the line. But anyways, now we're back up to proper peak efficiency. Um, so we're I've already got a hundred and something uh, of these things, which is good. As I said, we used an enormous quantity of these resources. What we should start doing really is building some gun turrets. So I'm going to create a few of those. And I believe magazines just require iron plate. We should probably also automate the production of uh, magazines. Just go ahead and throw an inserter. Uh, in order to um, give us a stock of ammo which we can use to fill these uh, gun turrets. So right now I'm not going to really place it close to them. I'm just going to put it around my production areas. And put down here. Probably ought to build another one of these down here actually. Um, and gun turrets do not require power. Uh, later on you can get laser turrets, which do not require ammo, but they do require power. Uh, I have not really dealt with those myself. Let's throw down a few, a little bit of ammo into these, just to give it a little bit of protection. Those two against a strong raiding party are not going to mean anything. It'll kill a few of the aliens. And we'll leave three there, and we'll give two here. Power this, and we're going to want another one of these inserters and some power lines. And a chest. All right. All right, we finished our research on steel processing. That allows us to build, well, it allows us to research a number of things, including advanced material processing, which will allow us to build better furnaces. They're more efficient, but they do require higher uh, level of resources to build in the first place. Okay, so next thing we probably ought to look at doing is automating copper production. And to do that, uh, I'm going to build a couple of these electric mining drills. One of them is just going to feed into this chain here to give us more coal to work with on the main line. The other one I'm going to face up, and we're going to send that onto the copper smelting area. Actually, it might be more viable. No, no, not with the current. Hmm. Debating on whether we should uh, move the copper production to the coal or the coal to the copper. It's kind of a chicken or egg scenario, I guess. Go ahead and give that there, and we'll keep a few on ourselves. Now we've already got, they're starting to accumulate a fair bit of these magazines. And we're actually, are we running low on iron production? We are pulling uh, three sets of iron now. One for the cogs, one for the magazines, and one for the transporter belts. So we probably will not be able to keep pace with just four of these furnaces producing iron plates. Um, hmm. This is only temporary anyways, I just want to build a little bit of ammo. I'm going to go ahead and end that and pull these out. It's more important that we have uh, 
I mean, we've got a good stock of ammo, 25 magazines, that's quite a few. Uh, it's more important that we have uh, transport belt production than that we have um, gun magazine production. Put a bunch of coal in there again. Okay. So, I'm trying to just just trying to sort out how we're going to go about this exactly. I think what we're going to do is just... Did I not connect these? Okay. So, like Anno, uh, this game uh, it is really engrossing to be managing all of these various tasks and trying to maximize your production and things like that. However, uh, you can very easily, you kind of hit these bottlenecks where you're like, ugh, there's so much stuff I need to be doing right now, and you're like, what do I start with, and how do I maximize the efficiency of that? And uh, we're kind of, you know, at certain junctures you hit that point, I guess. Um, and it's just tough to figure out what you want to do from there. Uh, Alright, so what we're going to do here is we're going to start moving coal in this direction. We're going to set up a uh, copper smelting uh, right here, basically, I think. We're going to tear this down, we're going to set up different set of mines over there, and we're going to automate copper smelting into bars. Then we're going to use those copper bars in our assembly factories to create, well, among other things, we're going to create electronic circuits. And electronic circuits are um, important for most complex objects in the game. Uh, and they are a prerequisite for green science packs, if I remember correctly. No, right. Uh, but they, well, they are a prerequisite in one sense. Transport belts, we have that covered. Uh, circuits, uh, these require, um, not circuits, uh, inserters. They require circuits. So, basically our goal right now, what we're trying to do is create green science pack automation. To do that, we need transport belt or transport belt automation we have that and we need uh, inserter automation so if we want to check out what do we need for inserter automation well we need to have iron plates iron gear wheels and electronic circuits well we're already using some of our iron gear wheels for the production of uh, assembling machines and another half of them are going to the production of science packs so realistically we're going to need more than one gear assembly plant, which means we're probably going to have to ramp up our iron plate production, uh, which means we should probably create another furnace. Um, so let's do that. We have plenty of coal. That's not a, not a problem at all. So we're going to need two of these and one of these. One, two, three. And there we go. Now we just power it up with uh, this here. And voila, we have now increased our production of iron by 25%, right? Something like that, you know. We go from four to five. I think that's a 25% increase in production. Uh, let's go check out our stone brick production here. Do we have coal? No, we ran out of coal. No, we ran out of stone. Why did we run out of... Oh, right, I removed. That's true. I forgot about that. But we do have 35 stone brick here, which is enough to create a few walls. Just gonna check the pollution. Still good. And electric satisfaction. We are coming close, sort of, to our cap. I'm actually going to go ahead and set up another one of these uh, iron smelter things simply because I think we will benefit from increased iron production. You always do, realistically. Um, later on, you're going to need iron for steel, and steel will be the primary resource you're concerned about, but uh, steel is still dependent on iron production, ultimately. I don't know how I got this in my inventory. I'm just going to go stack that over there. Um, let's go ahead and do that. And we need a power 
hole. Right there. What are we missing here? Did we forget to do, yeah, that's what it is. All right, now we're starting to get good iron production again. We've got six furnaces working. That's a sizable amount. We still have just tons of iron. Uh, what we might do here, is this still powered everything? Good, we're gonna just go on another. We're gonna build two more furnaces and we're just gonna really, really produce iron. Uh, because it is a staple resource as I have mentioned several times now. Okay. Where, okay, they're coming out of here. Let's do that and that. Thought I built two more of these, whatever. Put it here and here, extend the track. Wood is one of the strange resources in the game. There's no way to automate wood production. So far as I know, I mean, there might be later on. I just, I've never encountered it. I have not completed the game. I've never gotten rocket defense. Uh, what is this from? Oh, this is uh, producing there, right. We should probably adjust the <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, the track. All right, now we've got double-sided iron here, which has merits and demerits. Are we stacking good? We are. We are definitely outproducing the copper consumption right now. And we're starting, I think, to hit a bottleneck in our actual iron ore production, which is good. We should do that. The only ore you want to really stockpile is coal, because coal is a uh, stockpile on assembly land anyways, because coal is something you want to have available as needed, rather than uh, going to be dependent on circumstance. And we probably need to go and deal with the power situation again. Maybe we'll just throw down a burner in front, reheat the water after this one. I'll actually throw down a couple of boilers. Definitely not the most efficient power uh, situation that I've ever done, but you know, a lot of this game, you're never gonna get everything perfect, right? That's, you'll try a lot, but it will not work out that way. And I did that again, where it's gonna feed uh, opposite. Alright, so now we'll just put the coal line. We might need to actually amp up our coal production down here. Oh, I didn't need to build that. Whatever. Go ahead and light it up. And here as well. Hmm. Okay, I'll just do it that way. And lastly, we want some more steam engines. What are we missing? Iron again. All right, now we can really see this is gonna be heated very thoroughly in these four boilers. And it won't, if the water's already at 100, it will not engage the next boilers to start heating it, which you can see it's not consuming coal here. Uh, so that's good. Are we stockpiling anything in here? A little bit on the end, it seems. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, we're stockpiling at the edge here because the plates are stacking at this juncture right here, actually. So that's good. We can start collecting directly again. And how much do we have in here? 500, that's plenty. And of course, we aren't doing any research because in order to even get to the next research section, we have to have green science packs. <clears throat> and the first next research thing we want to actually get is automation 2. Where is that at? Let me just do it this way. Oh yeah, we need electronics actually. Ooh, that's a red research. Okay. Electronics would give us smart inserters, which I don't use. I don't do any of the 
uh, smart stuff in this game. I probably should. It'd probably be very good and effective. But, uh, I just don't. Hmm. Okay, yeah, we are actually seeing the iron ore production outpaced here. So let's go ahead and throw down another one of these mines. We ought to actually build probably another one. Eh, we'll build two more, th three more, because then we can have four on here. And then we'll probably never have to deal with the iron ore production issue until we have to actually build a new mine, that is. There's that, and let's throw down. All right, and there we go. We should now produce enough iron so that we will stockpile it on the conveyor belt. Still have not managed to automate this coal situation yet, or the copper situation. All right, let's go ahead and start reorganizing this. We're gonna want at least two of these. Do we run out of? We need copper, we need iron. Again. There we go. So these last four are ones we can collect from, usually, that is. Uh, pull another one of these. Alright. So, if we want to do this efficiently, we probably want to set it up. Actually, one to the left of that, even. Set it up like this, and this will be probably enough copper ore to last us to the point where we won't need it again until it's actually out. Let's tear this down over here. And we gotta power the last one. Um, all right, so we are actually capped on our production right now. And again, for some reason, we're not producing at efficiency, so that means I probably messed up on down, down here. Feeding from coal. Uh, stack in there. In there. Okay, let's see. You are taking off the line. Hmm. So the water temperature is just not high enough there. What would be better for us is actually if we just built some pipes for the water to actually heat up. In fact, it would be better if we did the opposite there, really. <clears throat> so we want to heat up here. And to do that, we're going to need to do this and this. And let's just for now, again, we're going to feed like that. And why is this not even working right now? I don't understand that. Let me see here. There's no production at all being done at the moment. Oh, right, because there's not, there's no water being fed in, obviously. Duh. We should probably build another boiler down here, actually. And I'll throw down another steam engine, too. Is this getting to 100 degrees here? No. It's definitely getting 100 degrees there. We should do some more boilers here. And let's go ahead and throw down a couple of inserters there. Are we out of, oh yeah, we're out of iron again. Of course. And 
And now we're going to need to actually, we probably should just move one of these over to the left side. And give it an ample supply of ammo here. Check the map for pollution. Good. <clears throat> now we're back on schedule. We should be should be good on electricity. Yeah, we've got four of these, so that should be two thousand power if we're at peak efficiency. And we're, we're not, you know, for whatever reason, we're just never gonna hit that point at the moment. Okay, let's start grabbing up some of this iron. Need to go grab some stone from our stone production thing. Oh, it looks like we actually ran out of coal on this burner drill. 33 more bricks here. Alright, we got electronics, which means we can now research autom automation 2, which we want to do immediately. Automation 2 is necessary for us to create green science packs. At least I think it is. It may not actually be. No, no, it definitely is because you need to create inserters, and inserters require three resources. So. All right, let's finally get that uh, copper production automated. So right now we just have that working. We're gonna tear this down. We're gonna tear that down. Move this for a second here. All right. This, this whole chain. Hmm. I'm thinking we want to run the coal, if we can, across the bottom. So it'll feed from. Yeah, we're going to want to do that. We're going to want to run the copper ore across the top and the coal across the bottom, and then we can use uh, long-handed inserters to run copper to a secondary line above it. Yeah. So, there's that. Create a few more of these soups. Yeah, three stone furnaces should be fine. Is that the right distance? It doesn't feel right to me. Okay, that is. Alright, let's start doing that. Alright, so it's going to feed coal in there now. So, we're going to want to pull copper off of that. And let's just move this until we actually stabilize production. And we want to build one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. All right. Definitely not the most efficient layout here. But it's, you know, I mean, it, it works after a fashion. Did I not build enough of these? Okay, one going to be here and here. And now what we're going to do is throw the finished copper bars there. And those copper bars are simply going to enter. And they'll enter this production line right here. We'll just tear this down, leave room for future expansion. <clears throat> and what we can do is start up some production of copper coil because I know that's a major, a major component in most of the things copper is used for. In fact, I don't know if there's anything that requires straight up copper bars. 
Maybe electronic circuits. No, that's copper cable. Let's see if there's a, if I can find anything in here that requires actual copper bars. I don't think so. What was it over here? This just no. Okay, yeah. So it looks like uh, the only reason to produce copper is to turn it into. Uh, this this eats copper bars, obviously. Duh. That's what we've been feeding it here the whole time. But the only uh, real reason to produce copper is in order to produce copper coil. Which we're going to do, or copper cable, rather. And let's do that instead. Move this here. And we're going to move that there. It doesn't quite reach copper cables, and copper cables are going to go on their own belt actually, because I think we are going to use them in automation along with cogs. And are we not producing enough cogs? We should probably uh, create another one of these. Hmm, how best to do that? Could just move this back one, really. Current setup isn't exactly ideal. Could also scale back production of that. Yeah, what we're gonna do is just tear that down, tear that down. We're gonna reassign this to produce cogs. And we're gonna swap the. Oops. Swap it to there. We need to produce another one of these uh, iron axes. Okay, so we can produce more cogs. There we go. We got plenty of cogs. Plenty of. Uh, oh, we don't actually have that outputting yet. And we'll throw down another one of these inserters to here. All right, there we go. And we can build fast inserters now. I'm gonna hold off on that just for a little bit. Are we stockpiling? Not really. I mean, kind of. And over here, of course we are, because we don't really have any of this later iron doing anything. All right, so we have, we have cable, we have cogs, we need to start producing electronic circuits, which will require iron plate and copper cable. Okay, so I'm thinking we want to feed iron plate up rather than copper cable down. Probably. Because most of our production is going to be situated in this area up here rather than down here. I think. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So I want to leave space for potential expansion of the furnaces uh, down here. So let's go a little bit more in this direction. And then we're going to turn and start heading... Oops, did not want to do that. Uh, start heading over here. do is we'll throw an undergrounder right here and there and we'll turn it up to go into or be next to copper cable all right now <clears throat> we can create electronic circuits by uh, doing, I think I'm going to feed the short line on the copper cable side, and the long hand is going to grab from iron. In fact, let's just do a fast inserter. Alright. 
right, and we got this. And we're gonna wanna output electronic circuits probably up from here. So let's grab a fast inserter again. Although the production of electronic circuits, especially in assembly machine ones, is not gonna be quick enough to merit this really. stick it onto its own conveyor belt here. And once we get automation two completed, then when we create these inserters, we're gonna wanna run gears into somehow. Eh, we could just use the iron up here to create gears there. These gears we can use for other purposes, uh, such as swap this back over to the production of conveyor belts uh, and we're going to swap this around again and lastly grab one of these to throw them into the box so we'll go ahead and revamp the production of uh, transporter belts which we're going to need for what we want to do with some of that other stuff. Okay, we can keep running these north for a while. We're going to want to turn left here. I don't want to redo the science stuff too. Probably. Maybe not. Might be able to just grab greens from over here. So we produce greens up here. Then hmm, let me just rethink this for a second. We want gear wheels and circuits. So we have circuits, we have gear wheels, and we need plates, and we got plates there. So we're gonna want to probably shift production up here, realistically. And we have plenty of plates. Let's actually just we're gonna want to create another cog cog line. Let's go ahead and move this. So we can grab directly off the iron line, turn that into cogs, and then throw the cogs onto their own special production line, which will then eventually feed into the machines we use to create green science packs or inserters, which uh, themselves will eventually be used for that purpose. I don't know why I just queued up all that. I can just grab out of the box. Grab uh, that many. There we go. Okay. I want to throw down a couple of these inserters. And we have uh, not been attacked, so I'm assuming. Our, oh, okay, our pollution branched out over here. And you can also see that it is starting to get thicker, especially around the steam engine area and the iron mines there. So, yeah, we are starting to create quite a bit of pollution. All right, these cogs are going to feed onto that line. We then use this line to, we're waiting on automation to finish realistically, that's what our hold up is at the moment. Unfortunately this uh, production line here is just incredibly inefficient because of how slow our creation of those science packs are, but we're about to unlock advanced assembling machines, assembling machine 2s, and we can then replace this one immediately with an assembling machine 2, which will upgrade its crafting speed by 25%. It will consume, I think, a little bit over twice as much power, and it does pollute more, but it is faster, and you can use it for three-stage um, stuff. Oops, uh, let's grab a couple of underground belts. We're going to need those. Alright. And we 
should probably go. Do we have any coal on us? We have one coal. Let's just throw 64 wood in there instead. Lots of bricks. Eventually the coal in there is going to run out and then we're going to start stockpiling regular stone, which I'm actually more in need of a regular stone at the moment, so let me just do that. Uh, okay, so automation 2 is complete. We have any more red techs. We want to get optics. That will allow us to get solar energy, which is important for various reasons later on. Uh, okay, just take that out for now. So let's go ahead and create a couple of these advanced processors. Uh, I just tapped the power button on my monitor so the screen went dark for a second. I don't know if that's going to show up in the recording or not. Hopefully not. Um, there we can replace that. Now it's going to speed up. Actually it produces less uh, pollution. That's nice. Uh, all right, so now we want to just, as soon as this completes, let's just demo this. What do we need to do exactly to create inserters? We need to give you gears, circuits, and plates. Okay. All right. The biggest problem is going to be getting uh, gears over there. Okay, I think what we're going to do is run it underneath with a oops, a uh, underground belt oops, and we're gonna pop it out here and then what we can do is use a long hand in order to go one oops one out and up all right all right so now We are going to want to build this here, and we can route the circuits around the other way. That's not really a big deal. All right, so this thing will successfully produce. All right, we got optics. Any other tech ones? We can get armor crafting. Not really important, but let's just do it anyways. We can get tech ones. Uh, I want to get fast inserters for this, I think. And a long hand. Where is it? Oh, there we go, inserters. Grab from there, grab from there. Power it here. And grab from there. Now, outputting it, that's the other question. I'm thinking we just, uh... Whew, okay. Throw an underground belt here. Pop it out over here. And let me look at the... Is all it takes is those two? Okay, yeah, we just need transport belts in that. So we can then run a production chain up here create our um, green science packs kind of in this area where I'm standing a little bit. I'm going to actually build a few lamps as well. Let me go ahead and do that. Uh, lamps don't do anything except make the area brighter, uh, which is useful from a, you know, like a player's perspective, I guess. doesn't do anything gameplay-wise, though. <clears throat> so we have lots of those. Let's go ahead and grab those out of there and start feeding them into this track here. And we can start exporting these. Are we missing? We're missing gears. We have gears though. Oh, it's just not producing because it's full, I see. Let's find them. Uh, all right, there we go.
Okay, and we're going to want to export green science packs into our science area and probably right around, just to go ahead and demo this. I want to set them up like this. And that's a terrible lamp placement by me, but just throw it over here. And we're not going to have that many labs operating, apparently, just due to how I've concocted this. And we are out of gears. We need to produce more. Yeah, it looks like we're just, we are just outpacing uh, our, uh, uh, our transport of belt production is rapidly outpacing our gear production. So let's, first what we can do is we can upgrade these to level twos. So that's part of the equation. The other thing is, are we still stacking iron on this? Kind of. Only later, though. This early area is definitely saturated. All right, let's upgrade this existing plant here. And we can use these older ones to just create more. I'll just try to stack these close. And we're just gonna throw down gears on this. That's all. And we're gonna need fast inserters if we're gonna pull this off the line quickly enough for the others to not grab it first. If I was thinking mathematically, it would probably be better for me to uh, to have modernized the first pair rather than the latter pair, just due to the nature of how the resources are going to be extracted. Okay. And we're going to get a couple of power lines. How are we doing on pollution? Oh, you can see it's flashing there. We're kind of, we're about to expand into the next ring, which is a, a dangerous state to be in. All right, hopefully this will stifle that issue we were having earlier. And I really should have just stopped production here so it wouldn't waste resources like that. One thing we could do is just start another gear production up here using the iron resources. Uh, I might do that. Thinking about the merits and demerits of it. Alright, let's grab all the uh, stone and brick out of here. What we're going to do now is start walling off and the most important thing for us uh, we probably have been doing poorly on power production actually let's check our satisfaction that's actually good uh, that's pretty nice oh armor crafting 2 is done alright now we can move on to our green science pack stuff so we want to start out with Really, automation. Uh, we can't do automation three. That's right. What do we want? Probably logistics. Mm, engine. Yeah, we we'll probably want to start working towards trains. And let's let's go for material processing though. Uh, we still haven't even created our first green science packs, but that's just what we're focusing on at the moment. We could definitely we could definitely benefit from an expansion in our furnace production down there. Did I not grab all the stone out of up here? I just need like a couple of 64 stacks, okay. And let's go ahead and go back to producing stone bricks. Let's give all the coal we have to that. Alright. <clears throat> Oftentimes it'll take people a lot longer to get to this stage just because of 
you know, prioritization of other things, you know, like thinking uh, weapons are going to be the most uh, significant resource that you need early on, which is it's just simply not true. You're better served by focusing on science stuff, which is what you'll learn, you know, fairly shortly after uh, you have played long enough in. And we'll go ahead and power this up. And the last one's going to output two there. And what are we missing? Oh, right, it's actually not hooked up to the whole grid yet. That is true. All right, so now this is going to output green sciences for us. And what we're going to do is just throw down a couple of fast inserters to throw them into the actual labs. One there. And this is a very limited scale of science production. We're only producing into two labs. Normally I'd like to have more than that. But... Uh, Really, I'm just kind of, I'm, what I'm working for right now, the main thing I'm trying to get to is trains. Uh, once we get trains, we can move into a different location. We can start, you know, uh, shipping resources and uh, setting up far away, like, colonies, basically. Uh, and that is when the game really gets complicated. Uh, you start having to defend and manage all this new turf. And we are not producing any extra inserters down here because our gear production is just stymied. Hmm, okay, I guess what we can do then is create another one here. We can use longhand to grab iron off this chain. I think. I need to slightly reroute this. Alright, so what this will do is allow us to create another one of these. And we can longhand inserter the iron feed out gears onto their cogs onto this line. again. Yeah, we're just very much on the brink of expanding out to the point where it's going to affect those guys. If we built another mine, that would probably send us over. Alright, I forgot to actually tell this what it's doing. I want gears. So now we can kind of wait on our resource collection. I think I'll save it here. This has been a very long introduction video, um, and we have managed to now automate the production of uh, science level 2, which is what we're going to be using for a very long stretch of the game. Uh, until we finally unlock kind of a fluid handling and start dealing with gas and acid and creating science pack threes. Uh, so right here as we're on the brink of causing a lot of things to happen, I'll end the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.